Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing at the Madden cheese as always. Got day two of player ratings drops. Today, we're looking at just edge rushers, defensive ends, and outside linebackers, whether it's 4-3 defenses or 3-4 defenses. I said in yesterday's video, if you guys want to see me continue with this series as EA releases their top 10 ratings for basically every player position this week, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, you're looking at the, uh, the list here. I don't really have any issues with this list i'll go down it from top to bottom i do think some of the uh it's a little bit out of order or there's a couple of guys that are getting um they're not quite getting the rating they deserve and i'll go over that now so number one miles garrett i don't feel like he deserves a 98 overall uh, i know he's a really good player uh and i and i feel like edge rushers when they, when they say edge rushers i feel like defensive ends have a bit of a advantage when it comes to these lists uh, because ultimately, um, when it go comes to outside linebackers, I think a lot of times their zone coverages come into play because EA doesn't really, um, you know, that's just kind of how it is. I mean, if it's a linebacker, zone coverage, I think, is more important. And if they don't have high zone coverages, it kind of hurts their overalls. And I think that's going to be some of the reasoning that some of these players are lower rated than if they were just traditional defensive ends. If you play franchise mode, you know what I'm talking about. If you change a guy from an outside linebacker to a defensive end, their rating typically changes and it typically goes up. So, uh, Miles Garrett being a 98 overall defensive end, I think I can agree with that. But as, as far as the rest of this list goes, to be a 98 overall compared to these other top edge rushers feels like I don't really think he's that much better than these guys. So, like I said, as a, as a pure defensive Defensive end, I think I could, I think I could agree with that, but it's just weird the way this list is set up and having it thrown together like this. Now, number two, Khalil Mack. Here's a guy who's kind of living off a of legacy at this point. The last two seasons, he hasn't broken double-digit sacks, um, which you know he's still a great player. Obviously, he's still a force, but he's come down a little bit. And if he doesn't pick it up, I mean, I, I really have a hard time even putting him at number two. I really feel like. Number two, based off of recent production and career trajectory, should probably be T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt is coming off of back-to-back All-Pro, first-team All-Pro seasons, three straight Pro Bowl seasons out of the first four years of his career, being the only year he did make it was his rookie year. Although you could argue that he had a very good rookie year as well. The guy's got 50 sacks already in four seasons. And he's coming off of a 15-sack season. Uh, the year before that, I think he had 14 and a half. So it's like the guy's super consistent already. Uh, and he also gets forced fumbles like crazy. He's one of the best in the league when it comes to forcing fumbles, which is a very underrated thing. If you can get turnovers at any position, that's that's huge. Uh, but he's, he's one of the best. Uh, I mean, he's number three. So it's not really too much. You know, I can't complain too much. But I feel like he's definitely, at this point, he should have um, separated himself a little bit from the field because he's tied with uh, with a number with a 94 overall. He's tied with Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt. Both guys are coming off of, uh, I think they're both coming off of injury seasons. But J.J. Watt, I really don't remember. But I know Chandler Jones, I don't think he even played last year. He's coming off of an injury where he didn't even really, he might have played a game or something like that. Uh, but he had no sacks. So typically when guys come off of injured injury seasons, their ratings can take a dip. Uh, EA doesn't look like they really did that here, but between Chandler Jones and like I said, JJ Watt, I don't remember if he was injured last year, it just seems like he's injured so much. But Chandler Jones and JJ Watt, I don't necessarily disagree with their ratings, I just think that TJ Watt should be higher. He should be a 96 or a 97 or something in that range. I think he's reached that status. Now, Chandler Jones and TJ or JJ Watt being on the same list just shows you the type of pass rush that team's going to have. That's why I mentioned this, these two as. Uh, one of my, you know, I think the Cardinals is going to be one of the better teams to take this year in, in CFM, which I've mentioned in recent videos because of things like that. Uh, but that's an amazing pass rush. They're the only team on here uh, that has um, two pass rushers, and they're both in the top five, which I think is awesome. Then you move on to number six, Cameron Jordan, another guy who's just super consistent. Um, he, he's, his rating probably hasn't moved in years. Uh, Vaughn Miller, who looks a little down, he's another guy. Didn't play last year. Then you got, um, you know, I mean, I, I would imagine that when he comes back, he's going to be the same dominant force. But even the last year he played, he wasn't the same dominant force that he was in years past. So Vaughn Miller's a guy that, uh, you know, he's, he's sliding down the board. Uh, Joey Bosa at number eight, also very consistent, young up-and-coming player as well. Or, you know, he's already established. But uh, then you have his brother, Nick Bosa. Now, this is probably where I start to have issue. I think this is Zedarius Smith should be ahead of Nick Bosa uh, at number nine. 
Uh, but once again, like I said, it comes down to uh, you know zone coverages and stuff like that. Zedarius Smith is getting hurt because he plays outside linebacker compared to if he just had his hand in the dirt at every play. I think he would be ahead. He would probably be a higher rated overall player than Nick Bosa because Nick Bosa only had one year. He didn't play last year either. I mean, there's like four guys on this list that didn't play last year. Vaughn Miller, Nick Bosa, Chandler Jones, and I think J.J. Watt. I don't really remember, but like I said, that's four guys out of, out of the top ten that either didn't play last year or played, uh, you know, maybe maybe missed most of the season. Nick Bosa only played one year. He only played his rookie year. He had nine sacks. I think he was rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year, something like that. Uh, and he's a really good player, but um, coming off a year we didn't play, I don't know how he already ascended to a 90 overall player. Then you got a guy like Chase Young, who I've seen people say he's already one of the best defensive ends in the league, uh, and he doesn't crack this list. He's the only guy that I really argue should maybe be on this list, and I'd probably put him at number 10. I'd probably move Zedarius Smith up a notch, knock Nick Bosa off the list entirely, uh, and have Chase Young there. But I can't really complain. Nick Bosa is a great player. But uh, Chase Young, I think he's a guy that definitely, um, you know, he'll be on this list next year. He's a guy on the rise. So that's the only guy. I mean, I think if, I think if there was an 11th guy, it would probably be uh, Chase Young. He's the only guy that I can think of that, that maybe should have made this list. And I really think that the biggest, uh, you know, if the biggest change I would make to this list is I would have TJ Watt at least second, if not even, maybe even first. I mean, I just don't think that the league thinks of him in that way. I think he still kind of lives in his brother's shadow. I think he still lives in J.J. Watt's shadow because J.J. Watt is still a guy that won three Defensive Player of the Year awards, He's had 20 sack seasons, multiple. Uh, I still think that uh, he kind of lives in his brother's shadow, which isn't really uh, fair to TJ, but that's part of life. So, you know, that's my take on the list. That's my reaction. Like I said, if you guys want to see uh, tomorrow's uh, reaction and take the same, uh, you know, let me know in the comment section hit the like button. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.